You are watching the Dog Talk Show. In our future story today, I've had ulcers for I can say more than twenty years, because the situation started when I was in primary. I was fasting. I'm a Muslim, so all along my mother didn't know what I'm suffering from. We used to just say it's ulcers, it's ulcers. You realize I don't eat certain foods, I don't eat this, I don't eat that. But we didn't know what the problem really is. As time went on, I think when I'm around in my secondary level, I visited a number of doctors at Mulago mainly. Over time, I decided to go and do quite a number of tests about what is really going wrong. You realize I get moments when I, I feel hungry, but I don't want to eat. But after a certain period when I want to eat, I feel the stomach is too full. And then when I eat, you can't believe the pain I'm going through. No matter what, whether it's a juice, whether it's food, whether it's a snack, it just you just can't live with it. If you saw me years ago and how I am today, it's really been a hassle, but I'm moving on. But I can say last year, after all the so many years, last year I visited Dr. Vicent Karuhanga. I explained to him what I am going through. This is after quite a number of recommendations. First he told me I have gastric ulcers. But when I explained in detail what I was going through, because personally my stomach can swell to a point where you can think I am pregnant, even like over, maybe I can say five months pregnant, it swells. And then after some time it reduces, it gets to normal like that. I throw up, sometimes I pass out stool with blood. So. At some point you can think maybe I'm pregnant compared to the things I really get, most especially the nausea. When it's too cold, I can't handle. When it's too cold and I am too hungry, that's the worst. He told me not to eat anything acidic. In this he meant uh, pineapples, oranges, lemons, and then carbonated drinks. And then he told me to avoid cabbages. He told me to have a lot of greens, eat more of the green. And for the beans, he told me it is not something I should really accustom myself to. I should eat them in less, anything that has a scar on it. The beans, the peas, all those, I really had to change. Everything just really turned upside down. I can say personally, I wasn't loyal to the diet. There are those moments, being a journalist, you can't really do away with, I travel on a border, before you know it, it is too cold, either you don't have your scarf on you, there are those moments you go past lunch, you're eating very late, and even when you're eating, you're eating something really funny, it's either chips or what, and then you go back home to have the food, you're having it very late in the night, and yet he also told me not to go into that. I had to change doctors, while doing this, I was also given a number of herbalists. I've really tried them and I cannot try them anymore. I've been seeing physicians, explaining to them what I'm going through. They give me medicines and that's all. But you realize things don't change. You are watching the Dog Talk Show. Insights from a malaria specialist. My name is uh, Dr. Jimmy Opigo. I'm hired to lead the fight to eliminate malaria from Uganda and support the rest of the world in a malaria elimination. I would like every individual to first realize that being malaria free is very easy and it is a personal responsibility. It requires certain behaviors certain practices, 
which you have to build into a culture. The culture of preventing being bitten by a mosquito by taking simple actions like avoiding being where there are a lot of mosquitoes, like in the night entering your house, spraying your house, applying repellents on your body. If you are a person who must work out like a security person, you have to apply repellents or treat your fatigue. If you are a person who has to travel a lot up country or in other places, you need to be mindful about the hotel you sleep in. Have they sprayed? Because within your own house you have taken care, but when you travel, when you get visitors, are they not bringing malaria into your house? So adaptation of simple behaviors and practices to keep yourself malaria free, including if you must visit and go for outdoor activities, even going with a mosquito net. You are watching The Dog Talk Show. The Doc Talk Show profiles Uganda's healthcare sector. On the Doc Talk Show today, we profile the Chirudu General Referral Hospital. Sticking out like a marvelous concrete jewel is the now famous Chirudu General Referral Hospital that came in handy when Mulago was undergoing renovation. It is located in the neighborhood of Boziga Hill in Much India Division and it cost a whooping 37 billion Uganda shillings thanks to a government that is evidently committed to the health of its people. Uh, briefly, we have five sections. That is hematology, uh, blood transfusion, microbiology, clinical chemistry, parasitology, and uh, histopathology. That is the main section that we have here. Some of the sections are actually combined, but uh, we generally separate samples when we are working with them. Uh, when we talk of hematology, that is a section that handles blood and all the blood tests. And then when we talk of microbiology, this uh, looks at uh, the microorganisms. Uh, it can be in any sample. Then when we talk of chemistry here, we are looking at chemical reactions that can actually be generated in the body. Uh, then when we are talking of parasitology, we are looking at these parasites that can uh, be within uh, human beings. And then when we are looking at histopathology, we are looking at uh, tissues which we can pick from patients and we are able to identify whether they have cancers or not. An emergency unit is um, a unit where we deal with patients who are very seriously ill and actually have had um, damage or injury to any of their major organs. So the major organs we're talking about are the brain, the airway, the lungs or the heart or the kidneys. So we handle patients in that who are having emergencies in any of those areas. So typical things could be your blood pressure being too high or too low. That's a type of emergency we handle here. Sugar levels being too high or too low any emergencies linked to HIV disease or tuberculosis disease are all handled here. We also handle psychiatric emergencies um, linked to mental health. If someone has a mental health issue, we handle cases of someone who has tried to um, harm themselves. Sometimes people try to commit suicide. Those will be initially handled in our unit. This hospital combines both the internal medicine department, that is medicine for adult patients, and also the burns and plastic surgery unit. So we also receive patients who have had burns, um, people who have had acid thrown on them and it has damaged their skin. Those patients are also initially handled here. In addition to that, we are part of the emergency and disaster response for the nation. So if a patient has a, a suspect for Ebola, we'll start off with our hospital. A suspect with Marburg virus or cholera will all start off here. I don't know if some people have, have read those media reports when there's a cholera outbreak. We're usually the unit that is starting off with those patients. So we are also part of the Ebola task force team for this hospital and for the Mulago team. So we receive those suspects and quarantine them 
and make sure they are tested before they are sent off to the appropriate unit. So we receive all types of emergencies for adult patients. Sometimes we receive children as well, but our primary group is adult patients. And when those patients come here, after we have done our assessment of them, we are sorting them out to determine if this patient should go to the cardiology unit for heart disease, if they should go to the endocrine unit for sugar problems like diabetes. So we are basically the unit that sorts out which unit a patient should go to. You are watching the Doc Talk Show. So we have learned a lot from her. We have learned that the commonest causes are the infections and the drugs. And it is very important for you to seek medical care because there are so many other causes of ulcers, including some of the, some of the most severe conditions such as uh, cancers of the stomach. So it is important you get to see your doctor who will do a thorough assessment on you. They will look for the cause of the ulcers and in some cases, they may recommend certain procedures which you shouldn't shy away from. And what's most important is the medicine that is prescribed for you, make sure you take it and complete it as advised. Because sometimes if you do not take this medicine correctly or if you miss the doses or if you don't complete the treatment, you will poorly manage the ulcers and will keep coming back, coming back, coming back again. So we thank you all for watching. Uh, remember, you can send in your questions on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, send in your comments. Uh, you can also log on to our YouTube handle, that's the Doc Talk Show, and continue watching some of these videos. Always happy to hear from you and we look forward to your questions and comments. Remember, this show was sponsored by the Ugandan government through the Ministry of Health, and we hope to see you next time.